Well, good afternoon. It's Tuesday afternoon, half past one. It's absolutely pouring with rain. And I've come up to the Northumberland Moors for a bivvy camp. It's not the weather I set a bivvy up in, this isn't, but uh, I'm going to pit myself against the weather. I'd promised me a camp. I didn't go out the weekend when it was dry. If I don't go out now, I'm not going to get out for another couple of weeks because of commitments. So I've come out anyway. I must be barking mad. We're walking over these moors. It's really raining. The weather's actually quite hideous. I'm out with Graham today from Graham's Wild Camping. He's just walking in front there while I do some filming. The Northumberland Hills. This is Buick Moor. It's actually very beautiful. It's so wild. And you normally get it all to yourself. It's amazing. Well, we've just come to the stream. We're not far from below Riri, but uh, I've just stuck my walking poles in. It's four foot deep. We've got no way of getting across. Plan B, the stream was that deep. We just couldn't get across. It's more than the length of the walking poles. So we're gonna, we're gonna turn around I'm going to go, go to some woods instead. I'm going to use Plan B, see what we can find. Well, we're in the woods now, not far from Ross Castle. See if we can find somewhere to camp. If we can't find anywhere here, it'll be back up to the top of Ross Castle. We're still a bit windy at the minute, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully we'll find a nice sheltered pitch. Just walking up through the woods and we found an old Bronze Age grave. Interesting. A lot of deer in front of us down here. There they go, look. They're going to be coming across the path. There we go. Well, you can't fault our effort today. The woods we went to were a disaster. They weren't even properly managed. It was just all overgrown. So we've actually come to plant C, which is Ross Castle, just up the top of there. It's a short climb up. Hopefully it's not flooded. Everything is flooded today. Just a quick climb up this hill and we should have somewhere to camp. It's a lovely wild landscape climbing up, isn't it? We started off over there somewhere in the distance by those trees. Right, we got to the top. Plenty of places to pitch here. It's not even waterlogged. Well, there's the pitch. I put the tarp up in a classic lean to next to the wall for some protection. I've got the Ar Dutch Army Hoop Bivy. I've just got my cap on actually, I'm just having a brew. I've got my uh, X-Ped mat, the foil mat underneath, X-Ped mat in there, Rab 400 sleeping bag, and I've got my comfy pillow. Rucksacks at the top end there, and I'm using the speeds to stove. It's a uh, Really coming in misty, look. The rain is horrendous, it's just relentless. There's Graham and his Hillyberg. Have a quick look around. There's the trig point. Some steps. Go, it really is blowing. So I've got the tarp from above. There's more than enough protection there, look, more than enough. I'm like king of the castle, aren't I, in here? Some different places, showing you where they are. I'm 
get under that tarp now and have me brew. A brew with a bit of a view. Graham's tucked up in his tent. I'll start shaking it in a minute. Not a very exciting view from under the tarp today. It's a bit wet to get out. It's a bit of scenery. Well, I'm as happy as Larry now I'm lying under the tarp. I've got me coffee. I've got me nice homemade curry to heat through later. I've got the hoop bivy that'll protect me from the wind from that side. And I've still got the views, look. It's not perfect because of the length of the heather, but uh, what a day. Plant A was Corby Craig's by Blair Weary. We couldn't get across the stream. It was uh, the full height of the walking pole, deep, and I still couldn't touch the bottom. So we, and there's hundreds of metres of bog all the way around, so we had to come away from there. Plan B was the woods at the bottom of the hill. We had an hour's walk in there, and it was so overgrown, you just couldn't pitch anywhere. So that's just a dog walking wood. And then Plan C was Ross Castle. And if it would have been boggy up here, we didn't actually have a plan D. But, uh, oh, I'm loving it. I spent four hours trudging round in the rain, torrential rain. The waterproof Osprey cover on the rucksack was worthless. The rucksack's just flooded inside, but everything is in dry bags, so that doesn't matter. I think next time it's raining, I'll just put the big pack liner in. I've got a massive pack liner. It's much more use than the uh, rucksack cover. I suppose with the heavy rain, the rain was getting between my back and the rucksack because it's got one of those vented backs, like the air mesh back. So there's a, plenty of space for the rain to get in. But I'm lying here now, looking out. I'm loving it. I must be mad as a hatter, but uh, I just love a tarp. Who doesn't love a tarp? I mean, look at look at it. Just I'm just exposed to nature. I love it. It's obviously colder than a tent, but I've got the down jacket on. What's what's there not to love? People have asked me why I use a tarp when I've got the hoop bivy. Well, it's because I just lie on top of it until it's time for bed, so I can just take in the scenery. The views are beautiful, aren't they? I'll try and do a 360. The wind really is picking up. There's the old tarp down there, tarp and bibbly. You can see Holy Island over there, look. Wow, the wind. Lovely views, isn't it? Have another look at the sea. Wow, well, I can't hold the camera still. There's something very relaxing about just lying in your bivy and brewing up with the speedster stove. And I can just look up and I can see the sky. Just gone eight o'clock. Sunset was uh, 8.05, I think. Wouldn't have saw, saw it because it started raining again. Just had a, a right shower. There's all my plastic bags. Bas basically, that's just me, me, me tea and me coffee and what have you. A couple of water bottles. Me bottle of fuel. And I've got me stove for the side, haven't I? Very relaxing. It's bitter cold. I've had to get, uh, I've gone, gone, I've got inside my bivy early tonight. The, the wind is biting. You can't keep your hands outside for long. It really is bitter. But uh, I'm lovely and toasty inside. I just pull the sleeping bag up and I can just look back and watch, this, watch the sky. I just love it. Love it. You know, it isn't as warm as a tent for your hands like when you're sat out like this, but when you're actually in it, it's so toasty because I think the space warms up so quick. 
I definitely think a bivvy's lovely to hate it. I, I mean, I love it, obviously, but uh, I intend to, to bivvy in all conditions this year, even high up. And I will practice some pitches for the tarp so I can pitch on the tops in the bad wind. Because it's obviously uh, the way the world's going, we're going to be living with bad wind. Well, I'll, uh, I'll say goodnight before I go to bed anyway, but I'm just chilling out with another brew. There's a surprise. Well, it's got nine o'clock now, it's pitch black. I'm going to get me a den. I must say, this, this hat torch that uh, my daughter bought me, it's great. It's got three settings. I mean, you wake up, you haven't got to fumble for a torch. It's amazing. I put a link in the uh, description. I think it's that good. And you can even buy the, the spare light module so you can carry another one charged up. Because it only last about two and a half, three hours. But uh, fantastic bit of kit. I was really surprised. I thought it was a gimmick at first. Well, I suppose it is a gimmick, but it's a blooming good one. It's a really good little addition to the kit. Like I say, you don't fumble around for a torch. It's blowing a proper hooly now. It's biting, biting cold wind. You wouldn't think it was, uh, well, it's April, isn't it? You just wouldn't believe it. It's freezing, absolutely freezing. When you're in your bivy and sleeping bag, it's spot on. But when you've got your hands outside, it's ridiculous. So anyway, I'm gonna get my head down. It's uh, too cold to do anything else. So we'll see you in the morning. Bye. Well, good morning. I've just woke up, seven o'clock. I've slept fantastic. Look at the sun. All that rain yesterday, and I've woke up to that. Absolutely fantastic. Got the old, uh, got the old stove going. I'll have a brew, a bit of porridge, and get uh, packed up. It's quite popular this spot. We had a couple of walkers turn up last night. I don't. Graham said that he didn't think they saw me here, but uh, he, he was talking to them because I. I've forgotten what happened there, but I think they whistled as they approached and uh, he popped his head out the tent as they allow. So it's obviously a popular spot. On a sunny morning like this, we'll have more walkers up here, so we can't really loiter too long. But I'm not getting out the pit until I've had my brew and my coffee. The army bivy, bone dry again, sleeping bag, bone dry. No condensation anywhere. Well, there's the brew. I just heard Graham talking about the condensation in the heli. Well, the matter of the story is, get an army hoop, Bivley. <laughs> Makes a change for me not to suffer with condensation. Obviously, I've got a wet, I've got a wet tarp. It's only a small one. That can just be shook off. I mean, Bivy and everything, bone dry, packed up in the bag. So for multi-day camping for me, not that I do it, it's a, it's a good bit of kit. Really prove it's worth this uh, hoop bivvy. Bone dry, every part of the sleeping bag, bone dry. All right, let's get finished pack up. We'll just record the morning because it's so nice. There's some bit of cloud cover up on the cheevids, look. They're very wet up there probably, mister. What a beautiful morning. After that rain yesterday, it was hideous. Can't see much of the coast this morning. What a beautiful morning. Graham's just finishing packing up there. It's a cracker, isn't it? Beautiful. It's my first visit to Ross Castle and I've seen it with the sun out. How's that? So leave no trace at always. There was my pitch. Quick last look at this. 
No, so Graham, it turned out a good camp after all that rain. Are you pleased with it? Yeah, it did. Uh, I was on the verge of not enjoying it, if I'm honest, but come to Ross Hill just absolutely saved it. We yep. couldn't have camped on Buick Moor. It was a smashing camp, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great. Loved it. Lovely. So we've come back to the, the path to Blay Way because uh, Graham lost his microphone in all that bad weather. And look at it, it's there. Bone dry as well. Well, it'll obviously be wet, but it's there and it hasn't been stood on. Excellent. This was the path we was on yesterday, just running a torrent of water in all that heavy rain. It's actually a pleasant walk across the, the moor this morning. And to find his microphone as well, that's spot on. Well, we're just walking back to the car now. We never mentioned it last night on the video, but uh, when we got to Ross Castle, Graham had noticed he'd lost his microphone out of his pocket. So he said we'd have a look this morning. And there it was. That's the beauty of camping out of season in the bad weather, because in this case, being alone on the moors paid off because no nobody was here to pick it up and pinch it. Hopefully it still works. The wind muff will give it some protection and the rain must get in less as well. But I think I'm going to end the video now on this nice pleasant walk back to the car. What turned out a really rainy, horrible start to a camp turned into a fantastic camp in a new location. Ross Castle really was a nice spot and to wake up to the sun this morning it was amazing. So if you've enjoyed it, <coughs> please like and subscribe. Thank you.